Hey y'all, welcome back to Homemade Simple. If we've not met before, I'm Lori. I love to share videos each week to help you on your homemaking and simple living journeys. I'm really excited about today's video because we're finally making it back into the kitchen to share some recipes with you that not only are easy on the budget, but also are gonna become family favorites. My family has really enjoyed all of these recipes and I'm really excited about sharing them with you. Summertime in Alabama means that we have to get creative to keep the stove and oven from heating up the entire house while the temperatures are so hot outside. That's what these recipes are going to help us do. I made most of these recipes in the crock pot. They all were delicious. They are all also very budget friendly. I will share the cost for the meals at the bottom of the screen for each recipe. And I will also include the recipes in the description box below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I hope you will go and do that real quick. Now, let's get busy making these delicious meals. things I wanted to do this week is make several loaves of bread. We always enjoy having a lot of bread. Lane especially loves eating bread several times a day and so I wanted to make sure that we had plenty for the week. So I started by making four loaves. We're not going to use nearly that many in these recipes, but I just thought that I would share this part of my week as well. My everyday loaf bread recipe is pretty easy, straightforward. I will give you the recipe that I normally use for two loaves, even though today I happen to double it and make four. I think that was a little bit of overkill and I probably will not do that again. So for my sandwich bread, I use one cup of rolled oats, one half cup sugar, a quarter cup of coconut oil, three teaspoons of salt, two cups of really warm water, a tablespoon of yeast, and five to six cups of all-purpose flour. I combine all the ingredients in a large mixing bowl and stir it with a spoon until it is incorporated enough for me to be able to knead it on the counter. At that point, I'll pour it out onto the counter and knead it for five to 10 minutes. After kneading it until it is shiny and smooth, I will place it into a bowl for it to rise covered with a towel. It normally takes a couple of hours for it to double in size. Unfortunately, my battery ran out and I wasn't able to video the second rise, but after it doubles in size, I just throw it out onto the counter and divide it into four, but you will, using this recipe, just divide it into two separate loaves and then form it into a nice loaf shape and then you can place it into a loaf pan to rise for the second time about two more hours then all you have to do is bake it at 350 degrees for about 30 to 35 minutes until it is nice and browned on the top this bread is really nice to have around. It's really good for sandwiches and the oatmeal in it allows you to have a moist loaf of homemade bread instead of a lot of the homemade breads that seem to be too dry. This bread always turns out to be nice and moist and will be moist until you use it up. The next recipe is intended to be a copycat recipe of Chick-fil-A's Market Fresh Salad. This salad is one of my favorite salads and it is always just so refreshing but it is super expensive it's almost ten dollars so this is going to feed six people for about thirteen dollars which ends up being about two dollars and fifteen cents per serving as opposed to ten at chick-fil-a plus you have to pay the gas to get there so this is a delicious recipe that i think you're all going to really enjoy now, I learned something new this week, and that is that you can cook hard-boiled eggs in the air fryer. I got this new air fryer. I'll tell you more about it in a future video, but this air fryer is number one, and making 
hard boiled eggs in the air fryer is also number one. I cooked about a dozen eggs in the air fryer for 15 minutes at 250 degrees and they turned out perfect. So while those are cooking, I also chopped up one pound of chicken, diced it up into strips and I'm gonna put some salt and also some Italian seasoning and saute these in a little bit of olive oil in the skillet. Since I was also adding eggs and walnuts to this salad, I didn't feel like I had to have an abundance of chicken, so one pound was going to do just fine. I washed and quartered one pound of strawberries and also washed one pint of blueberries and chopped up two heads of romaine lettuce. After all the ingredients were all completed and ready to put together, I added one bag of fresh spinach. Again, my bowl is too small. This happens every time. <laughs> so I'm sure y'all are used to that problem by now. I guess I need to get like a five gallon bucket to do my mixing in. But I mixed all the greens and then I'm gonna add the fruit and try to combine those. And then also add in the chicken and the hard boiled eggs that I have chopped. I'm gonna add a couple of walnuts as well. Maybe about one half to one whole cup of walnuts. I'm also gonna add a package of blue cheese. This is completely optional, but it does add a nice tangy taste. And this salad is ready to go. It is refreshing, perfect for a hot summer evening. And I hope that you enjoy it as much as I do. Next up is a frugal spin on chicken tacos and Mexican rice. This recipe could not have been simpler. I added a pound and a half of chicken to my slow cooker and then diced up one onion and one bell pepper and placed those on the top of the chicken. I added one tablespoon each of chili powder, paprika, cumin, and salt. I also added one small can of diced tomatoes, including the juice, and then about a quarter of a cup of water to make sure that there was plenty of liquid in the crock pot as it was cooking. I placed the lid on the crock pot and turned it to high, and in about four hours, all of the chicken was nice and tender and ready to go. I'm just gonna shred the chicken in the crock pot, and then after I shred all of the pieces, I'm going to remove the chicken and vegetables and use the broth to make my own Mexican rice. This was sort of a trial and error kind of thing. I've never really made Mexican rice that ever turned out very good, but this was a really good way of doing it. Using this reserved liquid from the chicken turned out to be a perfect way to get well-seasoned Mexican rice without having to use any pre-made packages. So I'm just going to add a one cup of rice to about two cups of the cooking liquid and allow it to cook down just like you would any other kind of rice. It took about 15 to 20 minutes. Now it's time to put the chicken tacos together. To make it a little simpler, I use store-bought tortillas, spread the chicken on the tortillas, and then added a little bit of shredded cheese and sour cream, folded them up, and added some Mexican rice to the plate and it was ready to go. This was a really simple and easy recipe and very affordable. This recipe in total ended up costing just a little over $6 and it made about six servings, costing just a little over $1 per serving. Our last meal for this week is a toasty chicken recipe that's also cooked in the slow cooker. It turned out really delicious and I hope that you will give this recipe a try too. I started with about a pound and a half of chicken that I had cut into thinner slices so that it would cook all the way through in the slow cooker. I placed that on the bottom of the slow cooker and then I'm going to add some seasonings. I'm going to add about a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter cup of dry milk powder. Also going to sprinkle in about a tablespoon or so of Italian seasoning. And then I'm going to attempt to spread one block of cream cheese on top of the seasoned chicken. Now, 
maybe y'all have a tip that you can share in the comments below but i do not know how to spread cream cheese on chicken and it not look horrible so sorry about the visual i'm gonna add about a quarter cup of water just to make sure there's plenty of cooking liquid and i'm gonna put it on low and let it cook in the slow cooker for about four to six hours when it was dinner time i shredded the chicken and toasted a piece of bread for each serving now, the first run I did a little bit backwards, but by the time that I fixed the last serving, I figured out that the best way to do this was to put the Havarti cheese on top of the toast and then spread about a quarter cup of the chicken mixture and add several pieces of cooked bacon. This chicken recipe ended up tasting really good and I think it's really versatile. I think there's a lot that you can do with this base of chicken. So I'm sure that you will see it pop up a couple more times in the near future. I served it with a side of green beans and the total cost of this meal was less than $6. So for six servings, it ended up being less than a dollar a serving. Again, a really frugal budget friendly recipe for a really delicious meal. Well, those were some really delicious meals. My family loved every single one of them. I hope that your family does as well. Don't forget to share in the comments below your favorite crock pot recipe so that we all can share together delicious summertime crock pot meals that will keep our kitchens a little cooler in these hot summer days. I really enjoy sharing these budget friendly frugal meal ideas with you and if you have any suggestions for upcoming videos I would love to hear those as well. Thank you for watching today. I hope you have a wonderful week and a happy 4th of July. I love you and I will see you again next time.